Hello again, chapter 22, the last one, cash flow statements. Go ahead and jump right into the PowerPoint. This PowerPoint came from a principal's textbook, believe it or not. In fact, I think I used this in 2020, a few years back. Let me see if I can share this. Fairly short, 49 slides. So let's go through here and uh, only have about six exercises, six exercises. Statement of cash flows, modified for 3020, in case you, this looks familiar. I know a couple of you had me for 2020. And you may recall this. What's the purpose of statement of cash flow? Three primary areas there. When we start talking about putting one of these together, and I would expect you to be able to do this on the exam, you got to have operating, you got investing, you got financing. Operating your core business, investing, how do you finance your business through selling bonds, through selling stock, uh, excuse me, financing through selling bonds, uh, selling stock, and then investing is associated with long term assets. So we'll go through this very succinctly. And you'll see how really straightforward this chapter is. It's a good chapter to end on. It's sort of a capstone chapter for this uh, class in understanding what's going on with some of the, some of the uh, account titles and processes we've learned this semester. So what's the purpose here? Purpose of cash flow statements. Readers of the statement of cash flows want to know what happened to cash. You know, the three big statements that or I think the three big statements that companies use are the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of, of cash flows, which is what we're gonna use here to put that together. So you really got three. Some will say, well, what about the, there it is, statement of cash flows. Some will say, what about statement of stockholders equity? I would classify that as four, but that's just me. So really got your income statement one, balance sheet two, statement of cash, cash flows is three. All right, so how, what do we need to put one of these together? Well, you need two balance sheets because that's what you're comparing the change in all your assets, liabilities, and equity year over year. And you gotta have what your income statement is. There may be some other uh, peripheral reports you would use to put this together, but let's keep it really basic at this point as we go through here, sort of a refresher from 2020. And from 3010, because I know uh, Dr. Bentley covers cash flow statements in her class. So we are concerned about what happens to our cash. I can't tell you how many times somebody said, well, I can see my balance sheet has a million dollars of cash last year. Now it's got, it still has a million dollars of cash, but how come I made $500,000 income and my cash is the same? Sounds pretty elementary, doesn't it? Well, the question is, did you spend a lot of that cash on property, plant, and equipment? That doesn't have any impact on your income statement. So if you spent $500,000 on property plant equipment, then that's why your cash is the same as it was last year. And there's a lot of other things involved as well as far as non-cash items that are non-cash expense items that are on your financial statements. We've learned a lot of new ones this semester, haven't we? I mean, usually you think about depreciation, amortization, depletion, but what about deferred tax asset? Um, what about compensation expense coming out of deferred comp? from our equity, that's non-cash items. So there's a lot of things that can impact your income statement that has no impact on your cash. It's a great slide here, slide six, that shows your balance sheet and what areas of the balance sheet go where as far as your operating, your investing, and your financing section. And they're color-coded in dark green are current assets and current liabilities, right? So that is your operating cash flows. That's where the bulk of your business uh, transactions occur. Current assets, accounts receivable, your inventory, what about current liabilities, all of your payables, wages payable, income tax payable, accounts payable. So that goes in the operating section because you've got to know where do these changes in your assets, liabilities, and equity, what part of your cash flow statement does it go? It's either in operations, investing, or financing. All right, what about this light green, long-term assets? Sounds like investments, doesn't it? 
Sure enough, it is investing cash flows. And so that leaves what's left in red, half of your liabilities, your long-term liabilities. Remember chapter 14? Printed into your memory forever. Bonds payable, notes payable. And then your equity, common stock, preferred stock, what's going on with retained earnings, with dividends, all of that is going to be your financing section. So there's your three categories for how do you break out, where do these changes, where does that get, where does that get plugged into your statement of cash flows? So that takes care of the balance sheet. Again, they show you the operating, the investing, the financing. Give you a little idea of that, operating, investing, and the financing. You can read that on your own. There's two methods. There's the indirect method and there's the direct method. We don't care about this for this class. This is the one most companies use, not that no one uses the direct method. Likely there are. But indirect method is what we will focus on in this class for working these exercises. You always start with accrual net income, all right? Accrual net income. And we're gonna adjust our net income to net cash from operations using these known relationships. So what are you using off of your income statement? Well, your net income or loss, you're adding back, you always add back depreciation, you always add back amortization because those are non-cash expenses, right? And this is what we're doing with the statement of cash flows is we're reconciling accrual-based net income to cash basis. It's like we're going in the opposite direction of what we've been doing the last 21 chapters. We are trying to determine the cash impact of our net income and how our different accounts change year over year in our balance sheet. So keep that in mind. So that's why if you start with the accrual based net income, you're adding back that expense from amortization, from depreciation to get your adjusted income. And then of course, we're gonna look at the balance sheet like that right there to pick off those accounts and add that into our statement as well, our cash flow statement. All right, so we have to, first of all, because there's two things going on here. You got to know where does it go on your statement of cash flows. Then you have to decide, is it a plus or a negative? Well, let's get the first part first. First part first, right? Where does it go? All right, what about cash receipt from the sale of equipment? Always look for the account title in here. Sale of equipment. Equipment is what? Long-term asset. So that must be what? That must be investing. Long-term asset. What about cash payment for salaries? What is salary? Salaries expense, salaries payable. That sounds like operation, doesn't it? So that must be what? Operating. What about cash received from the collection of long-term note receivable? Long-term note receivable. That is what? Long-term asset. So that must be an investment section. Purchase of equipment in exchange for a notes payable. Now this is interesting because there's really no mention of cash here, is there? And what you're doing. See those first three say cash this, cash this, cash this. Purchase of equipment in exchange for notes payable. So this is an off statement of cash flows sort of disclosure or footnote that explains what's taking place. So that's not going to be on your statement, non-cash. Cash receipt from the issuance of common stock. Sounds like financing because common stock is equity. Right? If that said bonds fail, it'd been the same, even though it's a long-term liability. So that's got to be financing. All right, those were simple. So how do we prepare the statement of cash flow? You know, I'm all about the tactical, how do we actually do these things? Because that's what intermediate accounting is. What do we need? We need the current income statement. We need two balance sheets. And there might be some other information. They go a little bit more detail here. There may be some other information you might need to know about in order to do this because you want to be able to explain it in as much detail as possible. All right, so we answer where does it go as far as operating, investing, and financing, right? So now the question is, when we look at a difference there, how do we know if it's a plus or a minus? But once you learn one, the rest are just gonna fall into place. Like the domino effect, I always like to use that term. So changes in current assets other than cash and current liabilities. So here we're looking at the operating section. So what if I have an increase in a current asset? Is that gonna be a plus or a minus? Well, it's gonna be a minus. 
And so if it's a minus four at current asset that goes up, and think in terms of accounts receivable. What if my accounts receivable went up from last year's balance sheet to this year's balance sheet? What does that tell you? That tells you that you had sales, you have net income that you've not collected cash for. If your accounts receivable went up, right? Or if your inventory went up. Or think about it in terms of prepaid expenses. If prepaid expenses went up, that means how do you make prepaid expenses? You have to take it out of cash. So those are all negative. Anytime a current asset goes up, it's a negative. And it's not just current assets, it's any asset. That's what makes it simple, including PP and E. Property, plant, and equipment, it's a negative. What happens with property, plant, and equipment? Like if we buy a piece of equipment for $100, I say $1,000, and it comes out of cash, doesn't it? So what happens to my cash when that equipment went up? Cash went down. That's why it's a negative. So all assets, all assets, if it's an increase, it's a negative. Well, what happens when you go across the equal sign in algebra? Remember that from, you probably had algebra in middle school. We got assets here equal liabilities plus equity. Assets have a normal debit balance. That's why that's an increase. An increase is a debit. Liabilities have a credit balance. Equity has a credit. So what's gonna happen when I cross this equal sign? Remember in algebra? Whatever is a plus on one side is a negative when it crosses and vice versa. A negative on that side becomes a plus on the other. The opposite is true here. If, if you have an increase in an asset and it's a negative, then a decrease has to be what? A plus. And so when we look at liabilities, if you have an increase in an asset, that's a negative. If you have an increase in a liability, that's a plus. Why is it a plus? Accounts payable is one of the best ones to look at. Think about what happens with accounts payable. If my accounts payable balance last year was $1 million, this year is $1.5 million for accounts payable. What's happened? I've got more payables. I've got $500,000 more in accounts payable that I owe for. Well, how does it get into accounts payable? Something had to have been expensed, right? And that 500,000 that was expensed that hasn't been paid for, where's that? It came out of your net income. So if my accounts payable has gone up, if any liability goes up, then that is what? That is a positive. I'm delaying paying my bills, which helps my cash position. That's why it has to be a plus. And that applies to all liabilities. All liabilities, not just current, it's all liabilities. And whatever is good for liabilities here is good for equity. What happens when you sell bonds or you sell common stock, right? Those are what? A debit to cash for, let's say, $5,000, common stock, $5,000. An increase in an equity or liability, an increase is a credit. It's a credit. Same true here with bonds payable or bonds, right? Bonds payable, 5000 My bonds payable has gone up because they have a credit balance. See how important that is? Credit balance. That's why I talked about it the first day. Over here, you've got a debit balance. Very fundamental. You don't have to memorize all of that. If you know what you do with one of these, the rest of it should fall into place. So which one, every one of these, you can get your arms around, whether it's equipment, what happens there, if it's common stock or bonds payable, Whatever happens, then everything else should just fall into place because it's nothing more than an algebraic equation. Again, the, another great thing about this chapter is there's no journal entries. Much like the chapter on earnings per share, no journal entries. All right. Of course, the opposite is true for liabilities and equity. They show you this... Uh, 
adjustments made to reconcile net income to net cash. Don't memorize stuff like this. Just don't memorize it. There are a couple of unique things here that I'm going to talk about. Gains and losses, right? Gains are what? Negatives. Losses are going to be positives. We'll see why here shortly. But don't memorize stuff. You'll get you'll get confused, and then you'll really mess up the the cash flow problems that we have at the end of the chapter. Got four good ones. So there's my net income. This is a very elementary exercise. Forty thousand non-cash expenses. So here we're adding back the depreciation, depletion, and amortization. Twenty thousand dollars. All right. We also had a loss. Oh, excuse me. No loss, but we had a ten thousand dollar gain where we sold some assets. This is unique. You do have to account for gains and losses. So if you've got a gain, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to subtract that gain off of your operations. You're going to make up for it here shortly with what you do in the investment side. Because in total, what you put in the operating and the investing categories, those two together have to net out to the change in book value from one balance sheet to the next balance sheet. All right. All we're doing here is breaking out the gains and losses from that change. We'll get to that here in just a second. So $10,000, keep that in mind, negative $10,000. All right, we also have an increase in current liabilities. That's a plus, right? Increase in any liability, whether it's an accrual for a litigation, whether it's income tax payable, whether it's accounts payable. If you have an increase in liabilities, it's a plus because you're not paying cash. You're holding cash. All right, so there's $2,000, and AR increased by $17,000. So if AR went up, right, accounts receivable increase, increased, then that means we are going to do a negative because you didn't receive cash for what you booked as revenue, at least not yet. Accounts payable increased by $40,000, so that's a plus. And finally, accrued liabilities decreased, so that's going to be a negative. So my Reporting of cash flow from operating activities there is $70,000. $40,000 from net income. We added back depreciation. We always add back depreciation. We're going to subtract the gains, and then you can see the rest of those. But the net is $70,000 cash provided by operating activities. We, in essence, have taken our net income and reconciled it back to cash. So that is accrual basis. We want cash basis. Well, it's called the cash flow statement, right? All right, so let's look at the investing side. All right, 310,000 plan assets were purchased with cash. Pretty easy. It's going to be a negative, right? Asset went up. A negative, 310. There it is. The $10,000 gain resulted from selling plan assets with a cost of 55000 and accumulated depreciation of 15000 which is what? $40,000. So I have to show on my statement of cash flows, $40,000 change between operating and investing and financing. There's nothing in financing on this. Between my operating and my investing, I've got to show a change of what? $40,000. $55,000, right? $55,000 minus fifteen. dollars My book value has gone from $40,000 Last year on my balance sheet to zero now. All right, I've already shown a negative 10. So what am I going to put in this investing section to make this thing 40? I'm going to put 50, right? I've got a negative 10 up there in operating. All right, negative 10. And there's the 50. So 50 minus 10, there's my $40,000. Change in book value. From balance sheet to balance sheet, from 40,000 to zero. All I've done is isolated what that change was in operations, what part of that is a gain or a loss, and then here's the difference to show the cash receipt from disposal of plant assets. And so then there's my total for investing. Operating, investing, we got those two down. Look at the third one. Financing. All right, so we borrowed 90,000 on a note payable. That's a plus, right? Debit, cash, credit, notes payable. Increase in a liability, increase in equity. Those are always pluses. Paid to retire old notes, so that's a negative. 
120,000 were received from issuing shares, so that's a plus, right? Plus, minus, plus. 20,000 was paid to acquire treasury stock, the negative. Dividends were paid, that's the negative. There it is, plus 90, minus 10, plus 120. Treasury stock, minus 20. Cash payment of dividends, minus 10. So there's my 170 from invest, from, excuse me, from financing. There it is in summary form. 70 from operations, which is what everybody looks at. 260, 170. Cash balance. And so there's my change in cash year over year is 20,000. Decrease. So my cash went down $20,000, even though I had net income. Right? What was my net income? Don't forgot. 40,000. $40,000 net income, the accrual basis of accounting. But my cash went down 20000 Why? That's what we just explained. That's why we do the statement of cash flows. That's why we have these three areas that we break statement of cash flows down into. What's your core business? What's your operations doing? Your operating section. What's your investing side? Where are you taking your cash and spending it? Mainly property, plant, and equipment. Then what are you doing financing? Are you bringing in cash to make your cash balance look good by selling stock or selling bonds? How much are you paying out in dividends? All of that is associated with financing. All right, so here's a good exercise in Pearson. I'm gonna write these numbers down because I'm almost through the PowerPoints. So here we got 20,000 cash received from sale of equipment. Appreciation expense, 12. Dividends, four. Common stock, 12. Net income, 30. Purchase land, 25. Increase in current liabilities, 10. And decrease in current assets other than cash. That's key there, other than cash. Because cash is what your, that's what this whole process is. Explain the difference between my cash balance last year and the current year's cash balance. 8,000. So beginning cash was 12, ending cash was 75. So we we need to explain $63,000, don't we? Why did my cash go up 63,000? All right. Well, let's do that. There's a solution. I don't guess I really need to do this on the board. Let's walk down through here. So we start out with $30,000, right? Net income, add back depreciation expense. It says my assets, or current assets, decrease. So if your, asset, if your accounts receivable goes down, right? Or if you sell property, plant, equipment, that's going to be a plus. If my liabilities go up, I'm delaying payment, that's a plus. 30 plus 30 is 60. All right, we acquired land, 25,000. All right, acquired land, debit land, credit cash. So that's a negative. Uh, we disposed of equipment, 20,000. That's cash received from seller of equipment. Doesn't tell us there's a gain or a loss, so we don't have to worry about putting a gain or a loss up here. So there's my 20,000 from selling equipment, right, credit, Asset, you credit the asset, the asset goes down. Anytime an asset goes down, it's, it's a plus to cash. 5,000 for investing. And then the final one, financing, it says we sold stock for 12,000 and we paid dividends for 4,000. So that's a plus and that's a minus. Hey, so there's my 63,000. Explained. Very succinct exercise, should be a Refresher from what you did in 2020 and what you did in Dr. Bentley's class in 3010. There are some special issues that we're going to look at here in these. There's four rather long exercises in Pearson that we're going to look at here. In fact, I put the PDF out there for you in uh, D2L. But there are some adjustments to net income. Depreciation and amortization are pretty straightforward. What about bad debt expense? Right? That's not cash. 
you debit bad debt expense and credit allowance, there's no cash involved. So you've got to add back bad debt expense. Uh, amortization of bond discount or premium is another one. Post-retirement benefit costs. I don't think I've got any exercises on that, but uh, another one is deferred compensation. Compensation expense, that's another one we have to consider. Change in deferred income taxes. Deferred tax liabilities, deferred tax assets. There's no cash involved with that. So there are more special situations here what we're looking at in intermediate accounting than what we looked at in 2020. Losses and gains, I sort of already talked about. There's the stock options. Deferred comp, write off to compensation expense. That's non-cash. Specials, and we're gonna look at all of those in these exercises. But the indirect methods, what we wanna do. I think I am done except for this last objective. Free cash flow. I don't have any, I don't believe I've got any exercises in Pearson on this, but you do need to be exposed to what's going on here with free cash flow. That is a very common term. What is free cash flow? It is really a subset of the cash flow statement. It's a subset. What is it? Well, we're going to take the cash from operating activities <clears throat> and then we're going to subtract very specific items here. We're going to subtract cash dividends and we're also going to subtract any planned investments for long-term assets. That's kind of like your capital budget is what it sounds like. What do you have planned to spend money on, cash on, and then cash dividends? Why would you have that as a subset? Why? Who cares about free cash flow? Well, that's your core business. That's what's driving cash in your business. That's important. And then they want to subtract out your capital budget, which is pretty much you're going to do that. And cash dividends, you're going to pretty much do that. You're not going to stop your dividends, are you? Not likely. You know, with everything going on in the stock market right now, um, you see how the price of oil has gone down. I've talked in class about the Exxon Mobiles and Royal Dutch Shell. Um, all these Occidental, all these have very high dividend payouts, extremely high now because their stock prices have been absolutely hammered. Um, and because of that, what's going to happen? they're going to lower those dividend payouts because they don't have the cash. Well, they've got the cash now, but they want to make sure they don't get in a situation where they need the cash. But by and large, when you're doing free cash flow, core business minus your capital budget minus cash dividends because you're not going to stop or change that unless there's some turmoil that you have to, like there is right now. But that's very rare. That's like every 10 years something happens like that. All right, so this example they give you is, they give you the numbers there. Um, <clears throat> if we backed up to wherever that example is right there, if you were doing free cash flow here, what would it be? Free cash flow? Well, it's going to be my $60,000 planned. Let's say this was planned. We don't know that. But that's planned, and we got minus 25 and dividends, minus four. So what would my free cash flow be? 60 minus 29, what is that, 31,000? Free cash flow. There's one you can work on your own. Okay, so that pretty much completes the lecture for chapter 22. So now we'll proceed and work the exercises for Pearson and My Accounting Lab for cash flow. <clears throat>